Have you ever thought about what might happen if we combine AI and quantum computers? Could this combination harm our planet or help us learn more about the universe? What if the military starts using advanced AI and quantum computers together? AI is getting really smart, and scientists are working hard on creating quantum computers. But what happens when AI and quantum computers team up? The US government recently told Google and NASA to slow down on making quantum computers. Why? Because they found something scary. A famous scientist named Michio Kaku also said something worrying about the dangers of AI and quantum computers working together. So imagine two things. Chatbots, which are like super smart software and quantum computers, which are super powerful hardware. When these two things team up, we need to be cautious. It's like a super strong partnership between software and hardware. Now let's dive into quantum computers, how they're changing everything, and what Mikio Kaku said. Quantum computers are a special kind of computer that uses the ideas from quantum mechanics to do calculations. Unlike normal computers that use bits to show information as zero or one, quantum computers use qubits. These qubits can show information as both zero and one at the same time, thanks to a cool feature called superposition. Think of qubits as the building blocks of quantum computers. They can be in many states all at once, thanks to superposition. This lets quantum computers do hard math really quickly, much faster than regular computers. Quantum computers use another trick called entanglement to work with qubits. This lets them connect qubits together, so what happens to one qubit affects another, even if they're far apart. This teamwork of qubits helps quantum computers solve big problems by using their combined power. Quantum computers are different from regular computers because they work in a special way and can be super powerful. Regular computers use classical bits to show information as either zero or one, but quantum computers use qubits, which can be zero, one, or both at once because of superposition and entanglement. This helps quantum computers solve problems much faster than regular computers. The story of quantum computers starts with a big idea in physics from the 1900s. This idea called quantum theory talks about how really tiny particles behave. It introduced the idea of quantum mechanics, which changed how we understand the basic building blocks of reality. The person who started the ideas about how tiny particles behave was Max Planck. In 1900, he said that energy comes in specific amounts, not just any amount. This idea made us realize that particles like electrons can only have certain levels of energy. Then, in 1925, another person named Werner Heisenberg talked about something called the uncertainty principle. This says we can't know both the exact position and exact speed of a tiny particle at the same time. This shows that tiny things don't work the same way as big things, and it's hard to describe them using normal physics. In 1935, Albert Einstein and his friends came up with a strange idea called the EPR paradox. They said that tiny particles can be connected in a weird way, no matter how far apart they are. But people didn't really understand this until much later. The idea of quantum computers started in 1980. A smart person named Paul Benioff said we could use the strange rules of tiny particles to build computers. He thought we could make computers that use things like superposition and entanglement. Then, in 1982, another smart person named Richard Feynman talked about how these new computers could solve really tough problems that regular computers can't. As time went on, more people learned about how to use tiny particles for computers. In 1994, a math person named Peter Shore found a way that quantum computers could be super fast at solving certain math problems. This would be a big deal for keeping information safe. In 1998, a group of researchers made the first real quantum computer with two tiny particles. It wasn't super powerful, but it was a start. After that, in the early 2000s, more groups and companies started making even better quantum computers. One group in 2001 made a quantum computer with seven tiny particles. In 2002, scientists learned how to fix errors in quantum computers, which was a big step forward. We've talked about how tiny particles in quantum computers called qubits can get messed up when they interact with their surroundings. Quantum error correction is like making shields to protect these particles from getting messed up. Scientists made new codes to do this, like the surface code, which made quantum computers more reliable. Around 2005, a big step happened. Scientists at two places, 
the University of Innsbruck and the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, made a working quantum computer with five qubits. This was cool because it showed that we can make real quantum computers even if they have only a few qubits. In 2007, some other smart people at Yale University found a way to make stable qubits using solid materials. This was a big deal because it meant we could build quantum computers with materials that are strong and easy to handle. In 2010, other scientists in China did something like teleporting but with quantum particles. It's not like in science fiction where people disappear and reappear. It means they sent the special quantum state of one particle to another particle far away. This is important for building quantum networks. In 2013, Google and NASA worked together to make a quantum computer called D-Wave 2. They wanted to use it at NASA's Ames Research Center. But then, the government told them to stop working on it. This caused a big problem because the computer was ready to go, but they couldn't use it fully. Turning it off and on again would have been expensive and tricky. Google was confused, too. They had a special lab for this computer, but it had to close. Google couldn't do much until NASA was back to normal. They said the computer was still working, but they couldn't use it properly until things were sorted out. The government stopping the project was a big problem. NASA couldn't keep working on the cool new technology they were exploring. This made the people working on the project sad and frustrated because they couldn't make progress. In 2019, Google did something amazing. They used a special computer to solve a really hard math problem. If normal computers did it, it would take thousands of years. This showed that quantum computers are way stronger than regular ones for certain things. Other big companies like IBM and Microsoft saw this and started trying even harder to build their own quantum computers. They were in a race to make better ones. In 2020, IBM made a fully working quantum computer that regular people could use. This was a big step in making quantum computers practical and available for many uses. Because of all this progress, governments and companies around the world started giving money and attention to quantum research. They realized that quantum computers could be super helpful. Scientists also wonder about life on other planets. The Fermi paradox is a puzzle. If there's a good chance aliens exist, why haven't we seen them? Some scientists think aliens might be using black holes as super powerful computers, which is why we haven't found them yet. People have been looking for alien signals for a long time, but maybe they're using different kinds of signals we haven't thought about. Some scientists are even thinking about how large-scale quantum computers could be a sign of smart alien civilizations. They suggest that black holes could be the ultimate source of computation for these civilizations. This means they're using black holes to do really powerful and fast computing. Quantum computing is special because it's really fast and hard to hack. Since quantum technology is getting better so quickly, scientists think that smart civilizations would use it a lot. These scientists believe that black holes are the perfect place for this kind of quantum computing. They say that based on how quantum physics and gravity work, black holes are the best spots for this. These alien-made black holes would be small, so they'd give off strong radiation, like something called Hawking radiation. This radiation could be a sign that these advanced aliens exist. It would have particles like high-energy neutrinos, which can carry information really well and are hard to stop. These scientists say that a place called the Ice Cube Observatory in Antarctica could help us detect these signals. This idea could explain why we haven't found any proof of aliens yet. If these aliens use black holes instead of radio signals, that's why we can't find their signals. Plus, they might only use radio signals for a short time, which matches something called the L parameter in the Drake equation. Mikio Kaku is a famous scientist who explains complex ideas in simple ways. He talks about advanced technologies and how they might shape the future. He wrote a book about quantum computing and talked about it on a podcast. He said that AI chatbots can come up with ideas, but they can't tell what's true or false. But quantum computers can help check if the information AI gives us is correct. This way, we can trust the results more. However, Dr. Kaku expressed concern about the control of fact-checking capabilities, as governments could manipulate information and suppress opposing viewpoints. Quantum computing could either greatly benefit society or be used as a tool for deception and control, depending on how it is utilized. The development of AI has been rapid, with significant progress made in AI image generators and chatbots. However, there are hidden dangers associated with this technology. For instance, 
deep fakes can be used to spread false political information and make baseless accusations against individuals. The ability to create realistic images, videos, and audio recordings raises concerns about the authenticity of evidence and the resulting confusion. AI technology also poses risks in international conflicts, as deep fakes can be used to fabricate orders and create chaos among the public and armed forces. In law enforcement, AI tools can contribute to excessive policing and biased decision-making, resulting in higher rates of pretrial detention and harsher sentencing, particularly for marginalized communities. The timeline for its development depends on technological advancements, new discoveries, and the availability of resources. Developing quantum computers is challenging because they are very sensitive to their surroundings, which can cause errors. Scientists need to maintain delicate quantum states called quantum coherence for computation. Quantum computers also require a highly controlled and isolated environment with extremely low temperatures. Creating and maintaining these conditions is difficult and costly. The fragility of qubits and the need for low temperatures pose engineering challenges when scaling up quantum computers. This is it for today's video. What do you think of our video? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. Thanks for watching.